Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean Butler. There's Bugsy Malone doing the things that she likes to do. We hope you are too. Please do me a favour, guys. Smash the like button for me on the video like you always do. Smash the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Join the 14,000 people that go before you. Welcome back to them. Welcome to the new. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment, of course. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. In today's video, it's a bit of a recap, I guess, on... Last night's very fascinating pre-season finale against Barcelona out in Spain. We didn't get the result, but I mean, the more I think about it, the more I feel like it doesn't matter. I listened to the points of Ange Postacoglu after the game, the interview on Spurs play when he said, look, we, we just ran out of legs. He didn't particularly want to change the team too much. He wanted to... Um, try and get everyone to have a near enough 90 minutes because we're one or two games short. Barcelona, of course, did make some changes, brought on the fresh legs around the 80th minute mark. And that certainly changed the game. It certainly gave those that team the impetus to get forward and, and take advantage of some pretty weary uh, legs by the end of it. But you know what? I don't really care. I was disappointed at the time because I thought it would be a really nice way to finish to be able to dominate Barcelona at their own ground, at their own game, and come away with the victory. Wasn't to be. If I'm entirely honest, I thought that their fourth goal was a little bit nasty. I thought like Regulon was clearly injured or clearly hobbling at the time. They could have put the ball out. It's a friendly after all. But they didn't. I think they wanted to not be embarrassed in front of their own home fans. But you know what? If I was a Barcelona fan this morning, I would be reflecting on that saying that wasn't good enough from them because Tottenham made them look bang average for periods of that game, large periods. The first five minutes was theirs. The last 10 minutes were theirs. The 75 minutes in between were all Tottenham. I thought the first half after the first five minutes was absolutely spectacular stuff. The, the takeaways for me, the negatives, I guess... Eric Dyer just doesn't really understand the system and his his particular um, proclivities towards laziness and poor positional play. I think it's pretty clear how we should all feel about him. I thought Porro again struggles defensively with the system. He was okay going forward, but he wasn't certainly wasn't the best on the pitch going forward to make up for what I feel like are just some real defensive positional issues. He was all over the place for the first goal. Wasn't anywhere near his man. Lewandowski had all the time in the world. Um, I think you could maybe say the same for Regulon, but you know what it is, guys? I think it's just the way that the formation sets up. He likes to do this kind of 2-3-5 system where the fullbacks invert more, more forward than the centre-backs and almost join with the, the the number six, Bissouma, um, like in last night's game. And I think that when you lose the ball, if you don't win it back, if you don't get up there and press really well and win the ball back immediately, then obviously the access, the space sits in the channels. And again, I've said it before, I think there's just no perfect system where you can occupy all the spaces. You have to sacrifice something in order to gain elsewhere. And I think that that's just the way that we're doing it. Whether or not these in inverted fullbacks are slightly too narrow or not in those moments, it remains to be seen. It will be a system that will need to be tweaked and figured out and worked on and practiced and practiced and practiced. But I think that we're going to find ourselves complaining about the fullbacks a lot this season defensively because I think that that's just going to be the natural areas in which other teams create chances because of the structural setup. So... I think we need to remember that we're going to be asking an awful lot of the fullbacks and we, we don't really have fullbacks in the squad that are natural defenders, particularly anyway, apart from with the exception maybe of Emerson Royale. So it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, something to work on and something to hopefully improve. But I think we need to just remember that there are consequences to um, structural decisions and tactical decisions. Uh, the only other concern for me, and it's not a concern, I'm certainly not making my judgment on him. I'm, I want to make that clear. I certainly want him to figure it out and, you know, grow with confidence. But at the moment, 
Vicario for me hasn't embedded me or instilled much confidence in my head. Every time I see him, he's a little bit, he's nervy. And I don't just mean with the saves that he could or shouldn't have made. I'm not entirely convinced that Lewandowski's goal, I mean, he got his el the ball went under his elbow. You could make, make an argument that he could have got down to it, but it's also Lewandowski and a point blank range just slightly off the left post. You know, the guy's a brilliant finisher. I'm not going to be too harsh on him for that. And I won't even necessarily be too harsh for the other goals either. But I'm just really talking about his kind of positional spacing. I think in the first half, at one point, the ball was not towards the edge of the box. And he came to the edge of the box to collect it. But then decided to move out of the box and head it. And he almost then got lobbed. The whole thing just doesn't feel comfortable right now and I think he's just got to sort of settle down a few good saves and he'll get it a few good moments a few you know come and comfortable claims from corner kicks or things like that and everything will settle down but right now I've got to be honest I just haven't seen anything that makes me think yet that he is the next Hugo Lloris or the next whoever I said last night he feels to me a little bit like he's probably got world-class saves in him, but also moments of madness like Fabian Barthez used to have for Manchester United. We shall see what happens as time moves on. Apart from that, guys, I'll be entirely honest, the only other performance that wasn't really noteworthy, wasn't disappointing, wasn't really noteworthy, was probably Solomon. I didn't think he was spectacular. I thought he had a quiet night, some a little bit poor decision-making, could have done better with his final choices and uh, and maybe there was opportunities for him to do more than what he actually ended up doing. Everybody else though, and I mean everybody else, I thought was super impressive. I think Oli Skip uh, was absolutely fantastic. Giovanni Lo Celso, another wonderful performance. Bissouma, another wonderful performance. That midfield three for me is... An interesting one around what we're going to do against Brentford. All three of them last night made stakes for the first team. And all three of the other side, Madison and Bissouma and Hoybier, put in performances that, if they're still around, could warrant inclusion when they played against Shakhtar. I'm entirely honest with you. At times last night, I couldn't work out who it was that was the six and who it was that was the second date, and who it was that was the, that was the more advanced date. You would naturally think that Lo Celso was the more advanced date because he naturally fits that 10 role like Madison, a different version of Madison, but similar to him generally, than any of, the, any of the other two. But actually, I don't think he was playing that role at all. I think Basuma was normally playing the six. I think Lo Celso was playing more in the eight, but he was dropping deep, and they was almost doing a double pivot role at times where one would go and one would stay. And Oli Skip certainly seemed to be the more advanced at least for the two goals that he scored. And weren't they fantastic? Especially the header. Absolutely sensational stuff. And I think that what I've taken away from it, from the midfield style and story, is that we have so many options. So many options. I think all of these six midfielders, and don't forget we've got Benton Core coming back too, all six of them at the moment are showing willingness to learn, an ability to adopt and adapt, and ultimately are... You know, playing for their position, playing for their for their careers at Tottenham. It's a wonderful thing to see, and it leaves you with that air of unpredictability. And that's something I was talking about all last season with how predictable we became. I was talking about it last season from a very negative space. I thought last season we were there was no unpredictability. Everyone knew when you were playing Tottenham who was going to be playing against you, what positions they were going to do, what the roles were, and what to expect. With this particular system, not only is it going to be new for every Premier League team that we are playing against, they, but they won't have experienced playing a Tottenham side play like this. But on top of that, I don't think they'll be able to necessarily, at the moment, identify who's going to be playing in which roles and what are they going to be doing. Because I can't figure it out. And I love the fluidity, the fluid rigidity, the rigid fluidity, whatever you want to call it. That system with the front three and those top three are working together in harmonious synchronicity that to me is going to be very difficult for teams, especially initially, but I'd say ongoing, 
to be able to kind of figure out. And if you can't be figured out, then you can't prepare. And if you can't prepare, then you're going into games not ready, so to speak. And that, to me, again, gives Tottenham slight edges going into the games they wouldn't otherwise had or have if they were playing in a system that was more basic, more, uh, more inflexible and less dynamic. That's the real takeaway for me. One last shout out. I do want to mention Ivan Perisic because again yesterday I think he put his name right in the ring, right in the hat to uh, start on the left-hand side in place of Sonny. I think that over the last three games that we've seen, for me personally, I'm, I don't expect Ange to make this decision because I don't think you should necessarily just base your thoughts and opinions on what you've seen in preseason. But from the sample size that we've had of Ange Ball, I would make the argument that I think Sonny has been the least impressive of the three people on the left-hand side. I don't necessarily think that that has to result or will result in Sonny not starting. I think that Sonny will start. I think there is miles in the bank. There's wins on his record that he can lean into. And uh, there should be a little bit, potentially, um, consideration or, that goes into that. But I think Perisic, for me, has looked the most obvious, the most stable, the best with his trickery, the best cadence with his stepovers, the most successful crossing. Um, I think it was at least one assist last night. If not, he got the key pass that led to the other assist. Um, and I think that that is, you know, a, a takeaway that I don't think any of us were expecting. I don't think many of us were thinking that Ivan Perisic should be at Tottenham Hotspur will be at Tottenham Hotspur this season, that we should get him off the wages, off the salaries, get him out of the club, let him go back to Italy or go back to Croatia and finish his career. You know, he was brought in for a different system, a different manager. But actually, to me, this system, this manager suits him. He doesn't have to do necessarily 90 minutes all the time. We know he's probably at his age with his legs. is probably going to struggle. And again, that comes down to the need and the necessity of having options. And we have options on that left side. Having Sonny, having Solomon, having Perisic, all three of them can play there offering different things. Again, it's the unpredictability. Who is going to play? I don't mind. I'm happy with any, any one of those three starting on the left-hand side. Similarly, I'm happy with Solomon or Decky starting on the right-hand side. What was interesting last night, what before I forget to mention anything else, was when they took Solomon off, oh, sorry, when they took Perisic off and they moved Solomon to the left and they brought Jed Spence on, I would have thought they would have given Pedro Porro the last 10 minutes playing in the right wing forward position. Instead, rather than playing Dep uh, than Jed Spence at right back, they actually left Jed Spence in the right wing forward position, which to me, I think is interesting. I don't think that Jed Spence has got any potential future really at Tottenham. I think that's he hasn't obviously done enough or shown enough to warrant it. But the fact that they kept Pedro Porro at right back to me suggests that maybe Ange sees him as second up secondary right back to Emerson rather than someone who can rotate with with Decky in Solomon for that right wing spot. Which I'm not sure if I agree. I'll be honest. Pedro Porro, a wonderful player. I love the guy's heart. Uh, he's got a lot to learn on how to defend. His positional play is just all over the place defensively. And, you know, I also think that, I've said it before, I think that Emerson Royale at the back post with those headers last season, Pedro Porro can't do that, aer that aerial kind of nonsense. So it's a, it's a concern if, if that's the decision that Angie's going to go and say he's going to play back up right back. How long are you going to keep Pedro Porro happy? He's just signed for the club and now he's coming to a new manager that doesn't probably view him as appropriate. I understand it. Horses for courses, square pegs, round holes and all that stuff. But yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. But guys, generally, look, the game finished 4-2. Doesn't matter. To me, the game was all about that 75-minute period in the middle uh, between their goals. And there were so many takeaways that I'm really happy about. I'm excited. I cannot wait for Sunday. Let me know who your man of the match was. For me, it was Bissouma. And we'll talk about players like yourself, GLO Celso and everybody else on a stream either tonight or tomorrow. Love you all, guys. Like, subscribe and comment. And by the way, thank you for 14K. Really appreciate it. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.